it seems there is definitely a tiger or a pathan doing the rounds for all. But we are not complaining because during 2023, more than a dozen hardcore anti-India terrorists across the globe have been eliminated via targeted assassinations, often in movie-style fashion. The most recent jihadi encounter happened in Karachi's sprawling slum of Orangi Township on November 12th last year. Rahimullah Tariq, a close associate of the jaish e mohammed leader and one of India's most wanted terrorists, Maulana Masood Azhar, was on his way to address a religious gathering to give yet another of his famous ranting speeches against India and Kashmir, when some unidentified men shot him multiple times at close range, killing him on the spot. However, Pakistan's media portrayed the incident as the killing of a local cleric. Just three days earlier, on November 9th, one of the top recruiters for lashkar e taiba Akram Ghazi, a significant target, was shot dead by bike-bound gunmen in Khyber Pakhtunwa's Bajor tribal district. Here, two Pakistani media referred to him merely as a muezzin, a person who proclaims the call to prayers. While the Pakistani government did not even acknowledge his killing. Stay with us and we'll tell you why and it's hilarious. But before that, please like and subscribe and remember to write your comments after watching. Now listen to the rest of the story. Before these two, a Lashkar commander Mia Mujahid was assassinated, who in Feb 2018 led a Fidain squad disguised in Indian Army fatigues and armed with AK-56 rifles with underbarrel grenade launchers and a huge amount of ammunition attacked the Sunjuan military camp of the 36th Brigade of Jammu and Kashmir Light Infantry in a pre-dawn attack, martyring five army personnel and one civilian and leaving 10 others, including women and children, injured. A counter-attack by the Indian Army shot dead three militants, though Mujahid managed to escape. But how long could he run? Five years later, in early November 2023, unidentified men abducted him in Neelam Valley inside Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. Then in captivity, they tortured him. Three days later, his beheaded body was found near Pakistan's side of the LOC, as if it was sending a message to other terrorists, we'll catch you too. The brutal killing sent shockwaves in Pakistan's spy agency ISI, Inter-Services Intelligence. Then a month earlier in October, a tribal elder Daud Malik, said to be the founder of Lashkar and also a close-eyed of Masood Azhar, was consulting with a doctor at a clinic in Mirali area of North Waziristan's tribal district when unknown masked gunmen suddenly barged in and shot him dead and as quickly as they came, disappeared into the surrounding countryside. Earlier that same month, Shahid Latif, alias Chota Sajid Bhai, was fatally attacked. He was the alleged chief handler of the four-member Jaish Fidain squad that attacked the Pathan Court Air Base in Jan 2016 in which seven Indian Air Force personnel were martyred. Now, early one morning as he was coming out after pre-dawn prayers from the Noor Madina Mosque in Daska Town, Sialkot, three motorcycle-born men fired multiple shots, killing Latif and his brother on the spot and injuring another. Latif was a particularly significant target. He was among the 40 terrorists who often took refuge in Kashmir's Hazratbal Shrine and which the army at one point even seized in 1993 to stop this practice but were forced to provide them safe passage to ensure the safety of the shrine and the holy relic kept there, believed to be a strand from the beard of Prophet Muhammad. However, Latif was arrested a year later in the valley and sent to court Bhalwal Jail in Jammu where he befriended Masood Azhar, the future founder of Jaish. While Masood Azhar was set free in 1999, in exchange for 154 passengers of the hijacked Indian Airlines flight IC-814, Latif languished for 16 years in the Jammu jail before being deported through the Atari Waga border in 2010. But back in Pakistan, he once again got in touch with Masood Azhar, who had by that time formed the now infamous terrorist outfit of Jaish. Investigators also traced Latif fingerprints in connection with the September 2023 Kokanag encounter in which two Indian officers and a policeman were martyred. Mufti Kaisar Farooq, a close associate of 2611 attacks mastermind Hafiz Saeed, was also killed last October. In early September, a top LET commander Riaz Ahmad, who handled Lashkar's operations and recruitment in POK and was also behind the Rajori attack in Jammu and Kashmir in Jan 2023, was in the middle of offering Friday prayers inside Al Quddus Mosque in Rawalkot, POK, just a few kilometers away from India's Poonch sector, when assailants disguised as worshippers walked up to him and shot him dead at point blank range. 
while LET operatives Maulana Ziaur Rahman and Mufti Kaiser Farooq were both shot dead in separate occasions in Karachi in September, once again by unidentified bike bone assailants. In May, Chief of the Khalistan Commando Force Paramjit Singh Panjwar was on a morning walk near his residence in Lahore when, you guessed it, unidentified bike bone assailants shot him dead. More than a dozen terrorists, all on New Delhi's most wanted list, associated with Lashkar, Harkat, Jaish, or Khalistan, have one by one been mysteriously killed on Pakistani soil in the last two years. Unofficially, Pakistani officials blame the intelligence agency of a hostile country, aka India's RAW, who they claim to have set up base in a Gulf state, a veiled reference to the UAE, and established a network of local operatives, some of them being disgruntled former Pakistani law enforcement personnel. This, they deduce, because Rahimullah Tariq's assailants seem to be familiar with the topography of Orangi slum, while Latif shooters appear to have been familiar faces because when they approached the Sialkot mosque on bikes, they did not arouse suspicion, and after the killing, they were able to escape easily as if they knew the area. Further, they say, despite so many targeted killings, why has no group ever claimed responsibility? According to Pakistani intelligence sources, New Delhi knows exactly the whereabouts of several terrorists and even shared the names and locations with Islamabad to take action and continue to keep a tab on them and many of these same men have been gunned down by unidentified assailants. Pakistan then predicted that Lahore-based ISYF chief Lakbir Singh Rode, nephew of Jarnail Singh Brindanwale, was next on Raw's hit list for his alleged role in narco-terrorism in Punjab and the smuggling of arms and ammunition into the state from Pakistan. Indian intelligence have handed over to Pakistan details of where he lives and the Gurdwara that he frequents, demanding, Hand over Rode to India. And as if on cue, he died of a heart attack on December 1st. Pakistan's IB claims raw agents are in bed with Afghan intelligence and were operating from a militant training camp in the Afghan city of Spin Bulldog. India may be well placed to take advantage of the deteriorating relations between Afghanistan's Taliban government and Pakistan's ISI due to their multiple disputes over the demarcation of the Durand Line, its problems with the militant group TTP and the forced and sudden repatriation of millions of Afghan refugees. However, officially, Pakistan and the banned militant organization it nurtures on its soil are silent about the killings. Because of pressure from FATF, the international watchdog on terror financing and money laundering, the Financial Action Task Force, whose sanctions hurt the already crippled economy and which only removed the country out of its grey list last October after four years of severe sanctions. The reprieve came only because Pakistan promised to act against terror groups on its soil and jailed LET commander Sajid Mir as proof. But he too was rushed to hospital and placed on a ventilator after he was reportedly poisoned in early December. Pakistan now has no option but to keep quiet as India allegedly goes about eliminating terrorists sitting on their lap. The string of assassinations gained traction after the botched attempt on the life of LET founder and 2008 Mumbai attacks mastermind Hafiz Saeed in Lahore in 2021. But following several successful assassinations, a report by The Intercept citing secret documents claims Pakistan's intelligence bureau, in fear of India's death squad, which India vehemently denies exist, has increased the security of individuals designated as terrorists by India, whose existence on Pakistani soil Islamabad has denied until now. But all that extra security didn't help Adnan Ahmad, a top LET commander and close eye of Masood Azhar, when assailants breached a two-tire security cover at his Karachi home set up by the ISI and shot him dead at point-blank rage outside the gates of his house in the first week of December last year. Some sources are trying to play it down, saying ISI is cleaning up its own house, as those killed now don't serve any purpose to the Pakistani establishment. Because this kind of cleanup happened before, in 2002 and 3 during the Parvez Musharraf regime, when under US pressure following 9-11, the head of the band Sipai Sahiba and the founder of Lashkare Jangwi and one of its major operatives was similarly shot dead and their assailants never identified. Others believe that factionalism and infighting within the Jaish Kader may have resulted in the killings of Shahid Latif and Tariq, which are being probed. India's alleged covert campaign appears to have secured some other notable successes as well. Transborder weapons trafficker Mohammad Riaz killed in Muzaffarabad, former Al Badr commander Syed Khalid Raza shot dead in Karachi, Hizbul Mujahideen operative Bashir Peer gunned down in Rawalpindi, 
Amritpal's mentor Avtar Singh Khanda, who died in strange circumstances while being treated for terminal cancer in a Birmingham hospital, and Sukhdul Singh Gill, wanted in dozens of cases in Punjab for murder, extortion and targeted killing, was shot dead in Canada's Winnipeg city. Killings like these surely send a message to the perpetrators, even though they may not transform the security landscape in any meaningful sense. They also provide a sense of closure, like the March 2022 killing in Karachi of Mistri Zahur Ibrahim of Jaish, considered the deadliest of the five hijackers of IC-814. Or like the killing of Ripu Daman Singh Malik in Surrey, UK, one of those responsible for the bombing of an Indian Airlines flight from Mumbai to Canada that left 329 people dead. More than 20 hardcore Khalistanis have gone underground in fear in the US, Canada, UK, Greece and Australia after the spate of recent killings. So efficient have the operations been that not one of the assassins has ever been caught, giving India plausible deniability. But it's all unraveling with the alleged case of bumping of Gurpatwan Singh Padud on US soil, which not only embarrassed India, but which seems to have put other operations on hold for now. Botched covert operations, like the attempt to snatch the billionaire fugitive Mehul Choksi from Antigua, could also have significant consequences for other future extradition efforts as Interpol has put Choksi's extradition on hold because it showed that he wouldn't get a fair trial in India, while Nidjar's alleged killing in Canada has strained India-Canada relations. That said, the ability to track down genuine national security threats and preempt violence directed at Indians is a critical ability that Indian security agencies must cultivate. Baseball's Limerick one by one was justice served. The perpetrators of violence were left unnerved. Go underground, but you'll surely be found. They are coming to get you for a fate you deserve. You will also find these sources listed in our video description section.